DxO Labs, the company behind DxO Photo Lab and the stewards of the Nick collection, have just released the single greatest raw processor available today as a standalone app, meaning you can now get the incredible image results from the DxO Optics modules and the mind-blowing noise reduction from Deep Prime, no matter which photo editing apps you use. I'm Photo Joseph, and DxO asked me to do the press demos for the recent virtual press tour on their brand new app, DxO Pure Raw. I've recorded a version of that demo here for you to see exactly what Pure Raw can do and how it can easily integrate into your existing workflow. Pure Raw is the raw processing engine from Photolab 4, along with Deep Prime, the latest iteration of Prime Noise Reduction. If you haven't seen Deep Prime in action, well, you're about to. The results will speak for themselves. For anyone who's longed for superior raw processing and unbelievable noise reduction, but didn't want to switch their entire workflow to Photolab 4, this app is for you. Let's get started. I'm going to give you a tour of Pure Raw, but not just the app. More importantly, I'm going to show you how it integrates into existing workflows. The folks at DxO understand that what they're effectively asking you to do with Pure Raw is inject something totally new into your existing workflow. And so we want to make sure that this is as easy and seamless as possible. So in this presentation, I'm going to show you four different workflows, starting with the user who may not use any type of asset management tool at all. They're simply storing their photos in folders in the Finder or in Windows Explorer. They then take one of those raw photos, open them into an app like Photoshop, do their work, and then export a JPEG and move on. So that's workflow number one. The second workflow is for someone who is using an asset management tool like Lightroom or Capture One. In this case, I'll be using Lightroom Classic and decides that they do want to use Pure Raw and they want to handle every single photo through it. They want every photo processed through Pure Raw before it goes off to their asset management tool. The third workflow is probably one of the most likely, and that's the workflow for the user who is already using an asset management tool, does not want to change what they're doing, does not want to have to process every photo through Pure Raw, but wants to occasionally take a photo that might be particularly high ISO or have a problematic lens or just might benefit from Pure Raw and send that individual photo off to Pure Raw. The fourth and final workflow will be similar to the third, but focusing on cloud-based apps like Lightroom Classic or Apple Photos, where your original raw file might not be living on your hard drive. So let's get started with the user who's just storing their photos in folders in their computer. This is Pure Raw, very simple. Let me switch over to the Finder where I have a folder with four photos in it. I'll take all four of these, drag and drop these in. And the first thing we get in Pure Raw is a pop-up asking me to download the DxO Optics modules. If you're not already familiar, DxO Optics modules are unique profiles per camera and lens combination that allow the software to optimize your file based on the exact camera and lens that you shot it with. If that sounds like there would be a lot of files, there are. There's actually over 60,000 modules available for download. So what this is doing is prompting me to download the modules that I need for the photos that I've imported. In this case, I need a module for a GH5 with a 50 to 200 millimeter lens, a Canon EOS 5D Mark II and a 50 mil f1.2, and a 1DS Mark III with a 15 mil fisheye. I'll go ahead and click on download selection, which happens very, very fast, click save, and now they're ready to go. These modules only ever have to be downloaded once. So every time you import a photo from a new camera and lens combination, you'll get that dialog. Once it's been imported, you'll never see it again. From these four photos, I wanna edit one picture, and I'm gonna take this one into Photoshop. I start by clicking process photos. From here, I have a few choices, but honestly, you're probably never gonna change any of these. The default is where you want these to be, but let's go through them. You have under raw processing, the choice between deep prime, prime and HQ. And this is really about noise reduction. HQ is the standard high quality noise reduction. Prime is the noise reduction that we've come to know and love from DxO Photo Lab. However, Deep Prime is the latest iteration of Prime, giving us the absolute best quality results possible. And this is where we're going to get our really, really superior noise reduction. Next is the format. You can choose between DNG and JPEG. JPEG is really only there if you just want to quickly output some files to send to somebody, but for the most part, you're going to want to use DNG. That's kind of the point here. By choosing DNG, you're actually choosing a raw format. Remember, we're starting with raw, but we're actually ending with raw. This is a raw file that will be processed in a way that will be superior to the base raw file, and it's wrapped in a GNG wrapper, meaning that it is still a raw file. You'll see more about this as we move on. Finally, you choose your destination folder. By default, the photos are gonna go into a folder simply called DxO in the original images folder, but if you want to, you can choose a new location for those. I'm gonna leave everything at its default and just click process. Now I am processing a deep prime file, which does mean that it's gonna take a bit of time to do. Deep prime is the most processor intensive of the batch. However, I'm on a Mac Pro here, which is a pretty rip and fast machine, so this tears through it pretty quickly. Once it's done, it asks what I wanna do next. I can choose to simply view the photos in the finder. 
I can view the results here in pure raw. We're not going to do that yet. Or I can simply export it. The export dialog pops up. Photoshop is chosen. I'm going to click export. And that sends the DNG file off to Photoshop, which of course is going to first be intercepted by ACR, Adobe Camera Raw. Here we are in ACR, and this is a true raw file. I can change the color temperature. I can do anything I would normally do to a raw photo. Let me go ahead and play with the exposure a little bit, and then I'm ready to open this. Now, if I click on open, as you undoubtedly know, opening this will render this into pixels, which will then send those pixels off to Photoshop. However, if I want the ultimate in flexibility, instead of opening it as pixels, I'll open it as a smart object, meaning that I'll be able to come back to the raw decoder at any time. So let's go ahead and click on this triangle and choose open as object, opening that as a smart object in Photoshop. From here, I'm going to go ahead and apply a filter, and this will be a smart filter. This is SilverFX Pro from the Nick collection, and I'm simply going to apply a quick preset in here. We'll add this one and click OK. Because this is a smart filter on a smart object, that means that I can go back into that filter at any time and make any changes to it, totally non-destructively. But now that this has been applied to this smart object, if I want to edit the raw file, I can simply double click on the layer there, and that'll take me back into ACR, Adobe Camera Raw, where I can make additional changes to it. I'll go ahead and do some adjustments of the exposure. I'll do a gradient exposure across the top there. Let's make that sky a little bit darker. And then maybe I'll make the foreground here a little bit brighter and just change the exposure pretty dramatically on this image. Remember, this is all happening at the raw level. So when I click OK, it reprocesses the raw back into Photoshop, and then the smart filter re-renders on top of that. So that's the first workflow. For the user who is simply storing their photos in folders and editing in whatever app they want, this is the workflow they'd go to. I used Photoshop, but of course, you could use absolutely any image editing application that will read a DNG. I'll close this and go back to Pure Raw. And the next demo will be of these two photos, which I'm going to send to Lightroom Classic. I'll click on Process Photos, leave everything at the default, and go ahead and process that. We're now looking at the workflow for the user who wants to process all of their raw photos through Pure Raw before sending them to their asset management tool. One of the things that we can do, though, is preview our photo in Pure Raw to see if it's even worth it, see if we want to convert that file to a DNG or not. Let's have a look. The processing is done, so I'll click on View Results this time, and that'll bring up a split screen. On the left, we have the original, and on the right, the processed DNG. From here, I can scrub back and forth to see the before and after. In this case, this photo was shot with a 15 millimeter fisheye, and the optics module has largely corrected that. So if that's what I want, then I can go ahead and keep that result. The next photo is a very high ISO photo shot on a micro four thirds sensor. Let's look at this one at one to one, and you'll see just how dramatic of a difference this is. Now, to be completely fair, the image you're seeing on the left has no denoising applied to it at all. You typically would never see a photo in this state. When you open a photo in any raw decoder, it is going to apply some level of denoising. This has nothing applied. On the right, we're seeing the results from pure raw. Obviously, a huge difference in here, but let's be completely fair about it, and let's send both of these photos off to Lightroom to compare. With those two selected, I'll click on Export to, and this time, I'm going to choose Lightroom Classic. And I'll also click this checkbox, also export original raw files. This means that both the DNG and the original raw will get sent off to Lightroom Classic. Here we are in Lightroom Classic. And what we're looking at now is simply the import module. This is not a custom plugin. There's nothing fancy here. It is just the import module with the two DNG files and the original raw files already selected. I'll go ahead and click on Import to add these into my Lightroom database. And there they are. Let's take a closer look at these two photos. I'll zoom into 100% here, and we can see that this photo looks tremendous. This is a really, really good result. But where did we start? Well, let's go to the original RAW photo. And here we're seeing the original RAW as processed by Lightroom. At this point, we're no longer seeing all that color noise. The RAW engine in Adobe's ACR, Adobe Camera RAW, which is, of course, also used in Lightroom, has done a great job of removing that. But there's still a huge amount of luminance noise. Now, to be fair, we do have noise reduction tools inside of Lightroom that we can use, and they're pretty good. But let's see how they compare. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Develop module and then set up a split screen view and I'll drag this photo into place. On the left, we're seeing the version out of Pure Raw, and on the right, we're seeing the version straight into Lightroom. I want you to pay attention to this part of the photo here, the back of this woman's head, the back of her scarf, where we have a nice big solid area with highlights and shadows on it. Look at the noise on the left compared to the noise on the right. I'm going to take the luminance noise reduction slider and start dragging that up until the noise levels look about the same on the left and the right hand side. So I'm going to say right about there looks pretty good. 
Now we can obviously see a huge difference between the photos as far as their structure and quality goes, but let's go ahead and increase the detail on the right and maybe add a little bit of contrast in there. And it gets better for sure. That is not totally awful, but compared to the left, it really is no comparison at all, especially when you look at the details on the shirt, the details on the flowers here, but this is just one part of the image. Let me show you a couple other parts. Have a look at this fellow here. Look at the back of his head. The amount of detail in his hair, the color in the hair, all completely gone here. A little bit over to the right, you'll see this gentleman with a beautiful scarf on and look at the scarf colors, the texture, the lines in here. Look on the right, the color is completely gone. It's almost monochromatic. It's just a big mush. And finally, let's look at some really dark shadow areas. Over in this part of the photo here, we have the back of this gentleman and the back of this woman and they're in complete shadow, totally dark. Let's look at the same part of the photos over here. And there we have not just black, but it's like a gray and a mush with some green. There's some weird texture. There's actually some kind of a pattern that appears to have emerged from the denoising process. Very odd, but this is what we're getting out of Lightroom on the right versus out of Pure Raw on the left. So clearly a dramatic difference for a photo like this. So this pretty much answers the question. If you have a high ISO file, should it be processed through Pure Raw? Absolutely. But what if you don't want to do all of your photos? You just want to take a single photo and send that one off to Pure Raw. Well, that's the next workflow. I'll get out of the split view mode, jump back to the library here. And in the library, I'm going to switch to a folder that I have here called winter to spring. And in this folder, you'll see I have a series of photos that have already been processed. These are all raw photos. These aren't DNGs. These aren't out of Pure Raw. These are just straight raw into Lightroom that have already been edited. I'm going to focus on this photo here. On this photo, we're not looking at a high ISO image, but we are looking at an image that was shot with a very wide angle lens, an eight to 18 millimeter, and there's a lot of fine detail in here. Lots of detail in the flowers, in the foliage, and so on. And what I wanna do is see if Pure Raw can maximize this image, give me a sharper image, give me more detail. So let's give it a try. Now, if I wanna edit this single image inside of Pure Raw, I could right click on the photo and choose Reveal in Finder or Show in Finder. And that's what you're gonna end up doing in most asset management tools. On any standard asset management tool, your raw photo lives somewhere on your computer. You just need to get to it. So right click on the image, choose Reveal or Show, and you will find that original raw image, which you can then drag into Pure Raw like you saw me do earlier. However, Lightroom Classic has a really cool trick up its sleeve. In Lightroom Classic, if I take this thumbnail and I just grab it and start to drag it, and then Command Tab over to Pure Raw, I can drag and drop directly from Lightroom Classic into Pure Raw, and Lightroom Classic has actually exported the raw file. You'll see my optics module download prompt. This was shot on a GH5 with an eight to 18 millimeter lens. I'll download the selection, save that, and then take that one file and process it. Once again, I'll leave everything at the default and click on process and it'll tear through this and then allow me to import it back into Lightroom. Now, in this case, I'm not gonna wanna import the original raw file along with it because that file's already there. So from here, I'll choose to export to, I'll leave that deselected and choose export. Once again, I get my import module back in Lightroom. We'll just click import and the photo's in. At this point, Lightroom shows us the previous import collection in the catalog. So I'm seeing the photo that I just imported. And you might be thinking, well, okay, now I have to find where my original photo was, take this one and drag it in so it's part of the same folder, part of the same collection. You actually don't. Let me show you something here. Notice under the winter to spring folder, there's now a new folder called DXO. That's the DXO folder that was created by Pure Raw. And because I have this option here in Lightroom enabled, show photos in subfolders, when I select this top folder, I'm gonna automatically see the contents inside of it, which as you can see over here, shows me both of those thumbnails. So here's the photo that just came out of Pure Raw. Looks really good, but hold on a second. This photo already has adjustments applied to it. Look at the develop module. If I go over here and scroll up, you'll see that there's curves applied and there's black point change and highlights, a bunch of stuff already done here. How does that even make any sense? Because I haven't done anything to it yet in Lightroom. Well, let's go back to the earlier original photo, the one I had already edited in Lightroom, and we'll see the exact same adjustments applied here. What's actually happened with Lightroom is by process of dragging that raw file from Lightroom into Pure Raw, the XMP metadata went along with it and Pure Raw put that XMP data inside of the DNG, which Lightroom is now reading as an edit that was previously done. And so it's reapplied it. But remember, this is all completely non-destructive. So I can change any slider or even reset it back to the original. But the point here is that I don't have to redo the work. The work is already applied for me. 
except for the crop. For some reason, the crop doesn't get applied, which is fine because this actually gives me a chance to show you an alternative if you're using an app that doesn't automatically do this, a way for you to get all the adjustments from one photo and move them over to the other one. And that is simply to copy and paste. In this case, I'll choose this photo here, hit Command C to copy, and I might want to copy all of the settings that I had applied to this image and paste them onto the other one, except for lens corrections. If you had applied any lens corrections in Lightroom or any other app, at this point, you would want to remove those because those have already been applied by Pure Raw. And if you apply them again, you'll effectively be doubling them up and the image isn't going to look right. So in this case, we don't have to worry about it. But if you had to copy and paste the settings over, make sure you don't apply those lens corrections on top of the ones that are already there. Of course, for this particular photo, I don't have to choose anything here except for the crop. So I'll select that, hit copy, go to the new photo, and hit Command V to paste that in. So now I've got both photos up here. Let me go back and forth and notice a couple things about the image. First of all, the distortion is clearly different. This image, the DNG, has removed distortion that we're seeing in this one, the raw. What this actually means, if you look at the bottom of the file, is that we're seeing more data. We're actually getting more information out of our photo with the pure raw version than we did out of the Lightroom version. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is, and you can probably already tell, that there's simply more detail in the photo here. But let's look at it up close. Let me go back to the Lightroom version, and I'll jump back into my split screen view and drag this one, the pure raw version up here, and I'll position these to the same place, zoom into 100%, and take a look at the difference in the foliage in here, the drops of water, the edges of the green, and the edges of the purple, and just how much sharper and crisper it is on the left, the pure raw version, versus the one on the right. Look down at the rock. You'll see even more texture in the rock down here. And in fact, notice that you can see more of the rock. Look at the bottom of the rock here, whereas here it's cropped out. That is the difference between the two raw processors. So this is great. We now know how to handle a single image from any asset management tool and send that to Pure Raw and then bring it back again. The fourth and final workflow is the same as the one we just saw, but specifically for a cloud-based app. This would apply to Lightroom CC or to Apple Photos. And in this case, I'm gonna use Apple Photos. In Apple Photos, I have a picture set aside in this album that I want to send off to Pure Raw. Now, because with a cloud-based asset management tool, you don't necessarily know where your raw files are. They might be on your computer, but they might be in the cloud. You don't have a reveal and finder option. What you have instead is an export. You're gonna have to export the original raw file from your asset management tool. In this case, in Apple Photos, I would simply select it and go to File, Export, Export Unmodified Original for that photo, and that would export the raw. Or if I was using Lightroom CC, I would go to the export module and then choose the raw file to export. Put it on your desktop or any other folder and then drag that into pure raw. However, if you're using Apple Photos, there's a pretty cool little trick in here. Let me show you this. If I take a photo and I just drag and drop it to the desktop, it's going to export a JPEG. However, if I hold down the option key and I drag this out, Apple Photos will actually export the raw file. There it is. So now I simply option drag the photo out that I wanna edit switch back over to Pure Raw and drag and drop that in. And there we go. Once again, we have our optics module download prompt. I'll download that and grab that photo, click on process, leave it at all the original settings, hit process again. And then from here, I'll send it to Apple Photos. Now, in this case, we're also not gonna send the original photo over because of course it's already there. So I'll choose to export this and I'll choose Apple Photos. And by the way, you won't see Apple Photos in your list the first time you run Pure Raw but simply go down here to select custom software and choose any app on your hard drive. Once you've added it, it'll stay in the list. Click on export. And the funny thing about Apple Photos is you actually don't get an import dialog. It simply gets added to the database. So here we see it. There's my recently imported. I'll go ahead and drag and drop that back into the original album. So yes, there's a little bit more asset management work to do, but that's how it works. Here we can see the original raw photo that I sent over and how noisy that one was compared to the edited one. And look at how much cleaner that is. Absolutely fantastic. So there you have it. DxO Pure Raw can integrate into any workflow, whether you're storing your photos in folders or in an asset management tool, whether you wanna process all of your pictures through Pure Raw or just some of them, there's a workflow for you. I hope you enjoyed this. And now let's talk about pricing and where to get it. The full retail price for DxO Pure Raw will be 129. However, through May 31st, 2021, you'll be able to get it at 30% off for 89.99. Click the link in the description below or type in the URL on your screen to purchase it now.
Finally, I want to remind you that I do a series of free webinars for DxO, usually to a month, and you can find the complete list of future and past ones at photojoseph.com slash DxO. All the previous webinars are there ready to be viewed, and of course, you can sign up for any future ones that are listed there today. Thanks again, and I'll see you back on the YouTube channel.